Biodiversity Lecture, Part 4 of 5, Saving Spaces, Saving Species, Why is it important to you? Speaker Oliver Hillel, Program Officer of the Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity, Location John Abbott College, St. Anne de Bellevue, Montreal, Quebec, Canada, September 17, 2009, organized by Doris Miller, Nature Connection, which is a partner organization to the Secretariat on Biological Diversity. Thank you for that. Could we um, move on? I just wanted one last kind of message before we can uh, begin the question and answer. It's about, um, well, this I told you already. Here are some estimates of the disappearance rate of species. Um, we've, we've talked about that. One, I mean, let's be reasonable here. The disappearance of biodiversity is a serious thing right now. It's not happening from today to tomorrow. Estimates show that if we go the way we are, those are the best estimates, but then science, scientists know so little still about that. But their estimate is that by about 2100, if we go the way we are, we're going to be, we're going to have, so to speak, killed 75% of all species on Earth. It's not the worst of the extinction uh, events yet. Uh, there have been times when more than 90% of all species on Earth have disappeared. So maybe we're not the worst, but we're getting there definitely, and and I think that gives us a pretty good horizon of something like a 90 years. That means you, your maybe two generations or three for now, to change that way of things. And and how do we change it? We have to uh, because the way, if you look at the scientific thing of it, it, it means that more or less at the same time, towards the middle of this this uh, towards the end of this century. The world's population will even out. So if you want to go straight to that conclusion, if we can save the species for the next 100 years, most probably we would have saved them for a good part after that as well, because after that, supposedly, we'd be able to manage this little planet of ours and not do it as badly as we did in the past. So, in fact, what, what, I, what I say to myself as a person who's professionally involved in this issue, and, and I know this is, you know, this is a privilege, but what I say to myself is, every little part that we can get created, every little species program that we can get out there and protect, every saving of water, every little step actually makes a difference. And if we save it now, hey, we'll give maybe 300, 400 years or maybe more. A species normally exists within a million or two million years. We're not there yet, and maybe we won't. But let's give ourselves a chance and, and let's get get a chance to these other species as well. So, um, it so happens that next year, uh, 2010 has been declared by the uh, UN, UN General Assembly, that means all the countries in the world that call themselves countries, there's still a few that don't. But for all the other countries, they're saying 2010 is the year in which we would like to celebrate biodiversity, and that we should do something about biodiversity. It will probably, and, and you know, let's see, but hopefully, it will become as important and as visible as climate change uh, will in the past. Climate change is a bit of that little, uh, in all the environmental problems we have, climate change is a bit that young guy that is seen everywhere. It's kind of, you know, he's, he's brilliant and he's come up and he's talked about it's a very serious issue, but don't forget it's not the only one. There are many others. Pollution is, is, is recurring, water problems are there, and biodiversity is one of them as well. So the, the, the idea is that uh, the International Year of Biodiversity has been declared gives us the opportunity to talk about that issue in 2010. And there's a number of activities, I don't want to uh, go into too much details, because I actually do look forward to a few questions, if you can give me the next. These are some of the main messages of the year. Uh, so it's up to us, you know, we can do something, but it doesn't look good right now. Second message, we need biodiversity. It's, it's, it's really our life. It's not somebody else's life, but it's our own life. Third one is we are there, uh, we are the, the, we're the cause. We have to realize that, you know, it's, it's like the first step in getting out of alcoholism. The first step you have to do is to say, well, I'm sorry, but I drink. So the first step we have to do to change that is to say, well, I'm sorry, but we are doing that. We are killing all those species away. So we should stop it as well. 
And the, the last message is this uh, is the International Year, next year. So with nat Nature Connections, with any other thing that you can think that you can get involved with this, even if it's only to appreciate it, then that's the right moment to do it. That's the symbol um, of 2010. We have uh, this, this is a very new logo, and it's, it's come out now, and it, there will be some subtitles that say basically biodiversity is life, and then the second biodiversity is our life, which I think is much better. Uh, I think that should be about the left. There could be a slide with, uh, with information. This is just a list of the products that will be available from our secretariat next year about, uh, you know, biodiversity, there will be posters and videos, so if you or anyone you know is willing to organize some kind of celebratory or, or training or discussion on biodiversity, we are very much here to, to help and assist in that. Yes, well, those are the partners of the initiative. I'm not going to bore you with all of that. But I think, uh, to close, I think, Let's say that I'm privileged also because I'm a biologist, right? So I'm, I'm, I have this chance of working in something that I really love. But I do feel that um, we are not normally in a position to understand how deeply we depend on other life forms. You know, there, there's a, a concept called Gaia that proposes that the whole Earth is one living being. And, and there's uh, a lot of scientific ground for that proposal because, in fact, the air that we breathe now, the 21% oxygen that we breathe today, come from blue-green algae, the same line and the slime that you see on, 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 you know, on construction sites, this green kind of slime thing. Those are the beings that produced originally the oxygen that we breathe today. So if by any chance these guys would cease to exist, we're gone from and within a what, what do you mean a generation without food how many days and then also if you look at it even we the human beings when you look at the composition of salt in our blood it is precisely the composition of salt of the sea why is that because we actually crawled out of the sea so those amphibians that that walked out of the the fresh water the first fresh water places something like 350 million years ago to come on, on, on land, we are the same thing. And, and I think uh, that might have been one of the great discussions people had some time ago when Darwin said that we descended from the same families or the same animals that gave rise to today's chimpanzees and orangutans and gorillas. People, people were very shocked at that time. I don't think we're that much shocked anyway today. I hope we're not, because the fact is, if we understand that, if we understand how terribly close we are to all those other animals and plants, then we understand why we should do something about it. So thank you for, for this now, and I look forward to it. End of part four of five of the Biodiversity Lecture held at John Abbott College. Continued.